Hello, friends. In our previous episode of Let's Build, we talked about how to build a rocket launching platform in Spaced Out, and it wound up looking about like this. Uh, but there's more that you can do with this, obviously, which is what we're going to talk about this time. We're going to talk about the rocket exteriors for all the different types of rockets that you would want to build throughout a Spaced Out run. I'm not going to exhaustively cover every single rocket type, because there's some of them that are just not as useful as others. I'm really just going to cover the ones that I'm going to be talking about in my Spaced Out walkthrough uh, when we get to that point. So, the idea of this is that the previous video, which is how to build a rocket launching platform for Spaced Out, is kind of required viewing. Um, so I'm just going to put that here and you can check it out. It's in the pre it's the previous video in this series if you wanted to look it up so that you know where we're starting uh, with, which is not something I'll typically do in these Let's Build videos. But yeah, you'll want to check that one out. Anyway, uh, let's get started on making some rocket exteriors. But first of all, we should talk requirements. So let's check that out. All right, my builder friends. What we're going to need to build some rocket exteriors and spaced out. Like I mentioned, the first thing is really just all the stuff that I mentioned when building a rocket platform. Because you need one of those before you can build a lot of these rocket exteriors. So... Yeah, I'm just going to beat you over the head with this recommendation. Just check that video out if you need to know how we got to this point. Secondly, you're going to probably need a source of gold, because gold is going to be an ingredient that we're going to use to create oxalite, which is going to fuel a bunch of our rockets. Uh, we'll talk about that later on. Oil and petroleum is another thing that you'll probably want, because that's going to be another fuel type that is going to be very useful for some of these. And I would also say a hydrogen source is going to be really useful. Uh, the hydrogen rockets are going to be much, much later in the game, but you're going to need a pretty good amount of hydrogen. And I know that the electrolyzers put out a good amount, but uh, I'd encourage you to try to find a hydrogen vent, or you could use the Saturn Critter Traps, which put out a lot. And finally, the most important thing, yes, you always know there's one more important thing on the very end. That is this mysterious egg, and yep, you definitely need it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, let's get this going. Uh, the very first rocket you're probably going to want to build is going to be one for gathering data banks. Um, I don't have any research stations, so let me just put on, turn on my cheats here really quickly so we can see this. Uh, eventually, when you get into the research tree, you're going to need this last bit of research for some of these ones that are deeper in here, which is this data analysis research. And that means you're going to need to manufacture uh, data banks. And the way you're going to do that is just with a building that is on board your rocket on the interior. But since we're just talking about exteriors here, let's talk about the very first one you'd probably want to make for this purpose. So outside, I would probably start off with a carbon dioxide engine. I scrolled through the whole thing and it was the first option. Anytime that you have a rocket, I also really like to put on these batteries. So I like to put on a battery and at least a couple solar panels. Depending on what else you have out here, you could add more or less, but you do get diminishing returns the more you add. So typically two or three will push most builds unless you have a lot of energy that's required on the inside of your rocket. If that's the case, you might want to consider getting something like a hamster wheel put in there to generate some power for you. But then that comes with its own problem of heat, so ideally this is the best option. Okay, and then finally, since it is just going to be a small carbon dioxide engine, and if you kind of look at the interiors of this, which we'll talk about in the next video, by the way, we're not going to talk about detailed interiors of rockets, just the exteriors. Um, but this would just basically do it. Um, all you have to do now is just fill this up with carbon dioxide. I'll get a dev gas pump to throw this in here. Oh, whoops. We want it to set this to carbon dioxide, not oxygen. That would be... that would be great. Make sure this is all done right. There we go. Then all you need to do this to get this thing to launch is to fill it up with carbon dioxide, and it'll take up to 100 kilograms. Whenever you fill up your rockets, you're going to start getting these range uh, remaining, and that's how many tiles your rockets can travel before they run out of fuel. If they do run out of fuel, your duplicants aren't dead necessarily. You can press the abandon ship button and they will uh, just basically deconstruct the rocket and they will all fall down and uh, fall onto the surface of the nearest, nearest planet. So sometimes you can use that to your advantage, but it's obviously not ideal because then you have to go back and rebuild your rocket all over again, which can be annoying. 
So yeah, this would probably be the first rocket that I would send out there. This would just be to gather databanks, and on the inside, you would just need to place, and again, I'm not going to talk about this in detail in this video, but you'd want to place something in here that's going to allow you to manufacture databanks. That building's orbital data collection lab. Once you have this launched, um, I'm just going to change my crew here. Stinky, get out here. All right. Uh, let me disable my debug here really quickly so it's not as bad. There we go. Just need to change, select a destination whenever we're going to launch this. When you're gathering databanks, you really just need to send it out to anywhere in space. So I just send it one tile away so that I can not have to go as far. There's not really any advantage to going that far. So yeah, so basics of this. Stinky choosing to go through the door instead of the faster way, which is up here. But yeah, thanks a lot for that. And there you go. Once you're out there, you're going to need some plastic inside here to be able to produce this. So that'll be kind of the first rocket that you use. When you want to get it back here, and one thing that I like to do is I like to name my platforms for what they're for. So like this platform could be for like a data bank platform. And that's so that when I land my rocket again, I can select what the destination is that it's going to go to. So I want it to land on the data bank platform and not one of the other ones that I have. So that's one of the easier ways that you can manage that. If you wanted to see what the abandoned ship looks like, just if, in case you're too scared to do it on your own, um, I'm just going to do it now. So confirm abandoned ship. Yep. <laughs> Apparently it didn't like that at all. Okay. Well, I promise it doesn't break your game every time, but this is what I get here. Probably from all my debug stuff that's on right now, but okay, whatever. We'll get to the next rocket after this. Okay, well, I guess we've recovered from our black hole. Uh, <laughs> let's get back to talking about this. The other reasons you would probably want to use the design for this is if you needed to ship resources back and forth between asteroids that were close to one another. Uh, this carbon dioxide rocket, you can kind of get a lot off of it on a lot of maps. So as long as you have destinations that are pretty close to each other... And actually, this map's pretty bad. Uh, one, two, three, yeah. Um, well, I guess you could also do one-way missions, so never mind. Um, if you wanted to do any shipping of materials between different sites, uh, you can use this as long as you have the distance to get there. So let me change my destination to somewhere like over here. Now this wouldn't be close enough, but if the game wouldn't blow up on us, then uh, you could just send it this far and then uh, whatever resources you wanted inside there to be shipped, you could abandon ship, but ideally you wouldn't need to do that. But you can kind of bounce between uh, planets if you need to. So, for example, I could fly here, land here, and regas up with my carbon dioxide, and then travel to this asteroid, regas up, travel back, and you could do that to do a lot of your interplanetary shipping. Same thing with this one here. That one's obviously too far. One, two, three, four, five. This one's already connected by teleporter, so you don't need to worry about that. But any shipping to anything out here is going to be a little bit more complicated, and we'll cover that afterwards. But. Um, and I say shipping mostly because, like, uh, you can add, like, cargo bays on your rockets, but you can also just do this. And you can mark anything that you want for sweep, and your duplicates will run it in here and drop it on the ground. You can hold infinity things by shipping this way, so this setup for a shipping rocket can do most of the job in the early parts of the game. Especially, and the biggest reason why, is because you're going to need to ship a lot of stuff from this asteroid back to your main one. This asteroid's going to have a ton of metal ore and refined metals due to the volcanoes and that kind of stuff. So you're going to probably be running shipping uh, back and forth between here a lot. The only other reason I would use this uh, particular rocket design for is for gathering artifacts and particularly artifacts that are close by. So you could just add one artifact bay like that. And then when you go on a mission out to, say, right here, or here is also within range, you could get the artifact that's here and bring it back. I only say that that's useful because that's one of the things that it asks you to do as part of your, um, like, check marks or whatever you want to call it to complete the game. Whatever those might be called. Objectives? Yeah, that. Uh, so if you do that, that's a good way to get those, and especially if you have your duplicates that are kind of living out on these outer asteroids. If you're looking to get more artifacts, you can just run these shorter missions to grab them. Instead of, like, running a mission from your main, uh, asteroid all the way out to the edges to try to get artifacts or something like that. You will need 10 unique ones, so you'll need to mostly start from other asteroids to get the ones that are going to be within range. 
Um, but yeah, you can just use this same design for doing a lot of that kind of stuff, and you're usually only going to grab one at a time. So because carbon dioxide is so cheap and so available, you might as well use it for any simple thing that you can. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this basic design, and I would say everything that's going to use a carbon dioxide engine. Let's get to the more intense ones. So let's talk about colonizing on a different asteroid. Um, so eventually we will need to land on these. And I don't have my, I don't actually have those discovered, but basically what you're going to get is, let's just pretend this is a different asteroid. Uh, you're going to get just get a view like this that's basically like, okay, you can see the top of the planet and you need to land on it and start working in there. Um, there's a few things you're going to need to be able to do this safely. So let's talk about one of the first things that you're going to do to uh, travel, especially to this like third asteroid that you're going to get to. So, what I would start off with for this is a steam engine. Um, mostly because it plays really nicely with this setup. Um, if you do have your aqua tuners in here, and if you are getting a lot of cooling going on with these aqua tuners, you should have a, a lot of steam. And also, I did build these steel gas pumps in here on purpose, both to vacuum out the excess gas that's in here, but also to send steam over. So, if we wanted to set this up, you could just create some pipes out of insulated, or rather out of ceramic. I guess they won't go back over this, but this will all be immersed in steam anyway. Just kind of run it into your rocket like that. And you can just put a simple signal switch on this to turn it on and off. Uh, assuming these aqua tuners have been running for long enough, this whole area will be filled up with steam, so let's just do that now. Let's just pretend that we got this already. Uh, how many kilo kilograms are these? Um, or I guess, what's the density that we want? Maybe like 120 kilograms per tile. That's kind of a lot, but oh well. There we go. So yeah, you're going to need a good amount of water to keep this running too, but this is about what it's going to look like once your aqua tuners have been running for long enough. And then once you need to fill up your steam rocket, you can just turn these on and pump it out. Um, and it'll just go ahead and fill that up. The reason I'd recommend steam over petroleum is because you're not going to need as many modules on the steam rocket. Uh, the petroleum rockets we will use later, but the, this uh, steam rocket has the exact same distance as some of the other petroleum rockets, but it can also fit all the stuff that you would need in order to colonize. So um, this one does travel a little bit slower, and it doesn't have as much height, but the height you lose on this, you will also like lose just as much, if not more by adding all the extra fuel compartments and stuff you're going to need for your petroleum engine. So steam, I would definitely say, is best for most colonization efforts. Um, the range that you're going to get on this is going to be 10 tiles, which is pretty far. And if you think about a colonization rocket, that's really just going to be a one-way mission. So uh, the furthest asteroids are going to be this one, the magma one, and the water and the ice one are kind of at similar distances. So I think these two are usually the furthest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So yeah, we could land on there with the steam rocket in theory. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Same with this one. If there's anything that's further, I'm going to talk about a different colonization rocket later on, just in case you can't reach that or if you want a different fuel source or something like that. Um, so yeah, you can get pretty much anywhere as far as colonization goes, which implies a one-way mission. So, uh, let's set up the rest of this rocket that would be here for colonization. There's going to be a trio of three modules that I like to add for colonization. One of which is a rover's module. That's just so that when you first get there, you can send a robot down to help unpack all the supplies that you're going to be sending so that you don't have a duplicate that could potentially get stranded out there and suffocate because it's too you're taking too long to get everything set up. So sending a robot first is going to be very handy in a lot of situations. The second part of this is a trailblazer module because you will need a duplicate to land on the asteroid in order to build a platform so that your entire rocket can land. And the third is this orbital orbital cargo module or orbital you know whatever you want to say it this orbital cargo module i'm usually going to load with some kind of refined metal and that's so that we can uh, basically send all of its contents down to the surface of the planet and then we can use that to build a rocket platform and then land the rocket on top of it so that's usually the three that are going to be essential for any sort of colonization effort when colonizing i will probably want to take a good amount of duplicates so I'm going to add a spacefarer module, which, uh, as it says, it can hold 10 duplicates, which is here. And so you can take a lot. I don't usually take that many, but the first one at minimum to this asteroid is when I will take like eight. 
Um, just because this is a big asteroid and there's a lot of stuff here that I really want. So I try to mine it out as hard as I can. So that's the idea there. Um, the other things you're obviously always going to want is your batteries and your solar panels just to keep everything powered. Like that. And then we just need to start watching our height. So we have three more spaces to play with and you're always going to need some kind of nose cone. So that'll put us at 24. If you want to put one more thing on this that's really small, like a critter bay, which can be handy if you want to, like, take Drekos or something when you settle somewhere else, that can work. Or if you wanted to grab an artifact on your way, that could also be a thing. Um, so, like, when I was going to colonize this, I could fly here first and then there. Or one, two, three, four, five, I could fly here and then six, seven, eight, land there. So, there's some other stuff you could do here, but this is effectively the essentials for colonization. Uh, as far as on the outside, the materials you want to make this out of, I would say Trailblazer, just don't make it out of lead because that's going to melt pretty easily. Especially if you're flying to the magma planet, um, that's going to be a big problem. We'll talk about that later. Rover's module, same idea. Just kind of make it out of anything that's going to be realistic and not melt if uh, something kind of hot gets near it. And then, yeah, just load your orbital cargo module with refined metals so that you can spray them down on the planet before you get there. As far as like actually settling on the asteroids and doing all that stuff, um, I do have a spaced out walkthrough that's going to be coming out that'll show you how to do all that stuff. So again, this build is just going to be to talk about all the exteriors that you might need. All right, let's talk about the next type of rocket you might want to work with. It's not going to be colonization, so I'm going to get rid of these three modules. So these three are really just for colonization. I don't ex expressly need those. Oh, by the way, your duplicants might not be able to reach some of these modules that are kind of further in. So you might need to build ladders kind of like that so that they can reach things. Um, I probably should have mentioned that, and I guess that's part of why I should be doing this like not in the sandbox mode, but whatever. So we'll get rid of those three modules. This is the other thing that's really annoying with a lot of the spaced out stuff is that if you destroy or deconstruct one of the rockets that's below another one that's being deconstructed, they'll, like, stop doing it. Uh, that just bothers me. I don't like that. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll get this one deconstructed. But the next one I'm going to be talking about is to mine stuff. Um, on these other asteroids, there's going to be places that you can go and collect resources. The problem is that some of the resources that you might want are really far. I think the only reason that I've ever gone mining before and spaced out was to get more algae. Um, so that would be the most practical use case, and this is something that the steam rocket can reach most of the time. Uh, so I'm only going to talk about mining kind of in a short area because there's just not a lot of reason to travel that much further. I guess with this one you would need a different one other than steam because it's a little further and you could get more algae from it, but ideally you should not need to go mining for anything. Um, oh, what's going on here? Who broke this? Oh, it's because I have a mixture of water types in here. Okay, above 10. Sure, whatever. So, uh, let's talk about mining. Let me get rid of this one. Uh, when you go mining, you're going to need to have a cargo bay to bring the resources back. So that's one of the things I'm going to want to add as Abe gets rid of our module here. And by the way, I'm going to start doing this with duplicates as much as I can because I think a lot of the like fast building stuff that you can use with debug cheats is what's causing the crash. I've had like three or four crashes before this too when prepping for this video and like testing out some different exterior builds just to make sure that nothing had changed on me. Um, anyway, so let's add a cargo bay and one of which you can add is a large cargo bay or a smaller one. Um, the thing that I've gotten with this, I've gotten really mixed results with the large cargo bay and like with how much it brings back, but I guess it doesn't really matter that much. It'll just kind of slow you down. Also, why does it automatically build but not automatically destroy? I don't know. This feels kind of untested. All right. And then the top of it is going to need to be a drill cone. Drill cone is going to require diamond as a resource and you will eat your rocket will stop mining the, re the asteroid that you're going to, either when your drill cone runs out of diamond or when you run out of space in your cargo bay. Your cargo bay, since I'm not going to be loading anything into it, I'll usually just check everything and then whatever you mine will get put in there. My duplicates are bringing back the diamond, so that'll fill it up. And now this should be pretty much ready to go to any of the asteroids to start mining stuff. Um, 
I guess we could send this rocket out. I don't really have a reason not to, so we will. The solid rocket port unloader was something that I built between these two platforms, just in case you needed to run mining missions at all. So this one also, if I have anything in my cargo bays, that's going to basically be from a mining mission. And I'm just going to hook this straight back up to... Uh, it looks like I have it snaking through here. I don't remember why I did that. I guess to help cool it down first, because this is going to be cooled by this setup. So that's a little weird. Okay, whatever. I guess that works. <laughs> Maybe better than going all the way down here and through the water and back up. But yeah, that'll still do the job. All right, anyway, so let me assign some crew to this. Stinky, just don't blow up the game this time. Thank you. We're fully gassed up here. We have diamond in our drill cone, which I think we still should. Right? Did I add this? Yes. I must have just deleted the ladder that was here. You still want the ladder, though, just so your duplicants can reach it. You just kind of build it somewhere nearby so your duplicants can get close enough. Uh, yeah, so let's pick a destination here. I'm just going to fly out to this asteroid to get some algae, which was pretty much one of the only reasons that I would go. Uh, and then once Stinky gets here, we can launch this rocket. And Sticky's not going to live out there for very long, so as soon as he starts having problems, we can send him back. Let me just help him out with a little bit of uh, oxalite in here. Yeah, when he gets there, I guess it'll be fine. Alright, so we'll just launch, and as soon as Stinky gets there, we'll get this out of here, and it'll be heading over to that. So you can kind of see how the mining works. Because I don't know if I'm ever really going to talk about that again, so I might as well mention it now. So anyway, that's probably the third rocket that I would see, and especially ones that you would need earlier in the game, because they're going to use the more basic engines. So there we go, and a nice graceful deletion, which makes a lot of sense once you get up that high. Don't know why they couldn't have just faded it out, but you know, whatever. Okay, let's talk about the next stage of rockets. The next stage is going to be petroleum rockets, and I'm not going to spend any time talking about why is this so far off? What is happening? Maybe it's because the sandbox is on? Yeah, okay. So, uh, I'm not going to talk about the sugar engine, and I'm not going to talk about the small petroleum engine, and I'm not going to talk about the rad bolt engine, only because I just haven't found practical use cases for these three. Um, the sugar engine, I guess, if you didn't have any carbon dioxide to get back, because, like, the sugar engine and the carbon dioxide engine are basically the same, but I guess you could just, like, carry sucrose with you to refill this once you got to a different place if you didn't have any carbon dioxide, so... I guess. I just haven't ever really needed it in a full run. Uh, the small petroleum engine just doesn't have a lot of height. It's kind of not great. Um, and the distance isn't great either, so I'd usually leave that one alone. And the Radbolt engine, um, I just find it to be way too expensive. Like, the amount of Radbolts you need to do stuff with this is insane. And it just doesn't justify the, the cost when the hydrogen engine is a lot more reasonable. So, not going to talk about those three. The next one up I'm going to talk about is the big petroleum engine. So I'm going to add this. I guess I'll turn my sandbox back on. The petroleum engine is going to need a few things to help it out, though. It's going to need a couple of large liquid fuel tanks. That's just to actually hold the petroleum. And then a small oxidizer tank. Um, this is the first time I'm going to be talking about oxidizer. And I would really not recommend using fertilizer. Like the two type of things you can use. Fertilizer. Let me paint this in here really quick. Oh. <laughs> Whatever. They'll deal with it. The two things you can put in here are fertilizer and oxalite. But the oxalite you're going to get much more fuel efficiency for than the fertilizer. So the combination I usually like to use with petroleum is two large liquid fuel tanks and one small solid oxidizer tank. And that will be enough for to balance the two things out. You basically need... Uh, enough to oxidize all the fuel that you have and oxalite will have will oxidize at like double efficiency so it can only hold 450 whereas each one of these tanks can hold 900 uh, wait this doesn't seem right oh it is double yeah double wait right am I crazy all right let me add a second one and let me see what this does because I could have sworn it was only one but maybe I'm just doing something wrong or no, it's only one tank. What am I talking about? Jeez. So yeah, only one large liquid fuel tank for each small oxidizer tank. Um, and that's going to give you an idea of... Man, these icons and everything is so buggy. 
that's going to give you an idea of what kind of distance you can get with this. So let me just set up some uh, sandbox stuff to fill this up with petroleum here really quickly. I need to actually select the type here. Petroleum. There we go. So we'll fill this up. And then the solid oxidizer tank, I have oxalite. At least I did have oxalite before, but... Uh, I don't remember if that was before or after the game crashed. <laughs> so let me set up the one thing that you're going to need as part of this, which uh, we haven't talked about yet, which is going to be the, uh, where is this? The Oxalite Refinery. It's right here. So if you set this up, this is where the gold comes in. I mentioned in the requirements that you're going to need gold for this thing. Um, and that's because the require the things it's going to take are obviously gold and oxygen. So I'm going to start pumping in oxygen to this too. And that ought to get it going to start creating some oxalite. So, waiting on gold right now. I don't even know if I have any on the map. Uh, no, it looks like I do. So, the idea with this is um, it's going to produce oxalite, but the problem with oxalite is it will gas off over time if you don't send it somewhere that it won't gas off. So, what I like to do is just create a little shipping setup here, and then I will like to send the oxalite down like this and just kind of drop it into the water that's right next to uh, our entrance point so that the oxalite won't gas off. And it'll be right next to the place that you actually need it. So I'll just set this for, I guess, everything, whatever. There, I'll just set it up like that. So the oxalite will get created. It'll get shipped down. I'm gonna be shipping it in the walls as much as I can so that it doesn't gas off. And then just gonna, just gonna drop underwater here and then your duplicates can load it as soon as you select it as something that you want loaded in there. We can check the uh, ratio of these things. I don't know why I'm so confused about this right now, but we can check the ratio that you would need to put in for each of these two things to keep it balanced. I'll add a whole bunch more oxalite just to kind of speed this up. Speaking of which, I wonder where Stinky is. He's almost there. Is he doing okay in there too? View interior. Uh, yeah, he's fine. He's holding his breath in the suit, but he has oxygen. Okay, so we're gonna get this all filled up. One thing you can do is once you finally add a spacefarer module, which I'm gonna add now because this is effectively gonna be like my deep space exploration rocket. Uh, you can add your spacefarer module, and then if you view the interior, you're gonna get a new set of diagnostics that says how much oxidizer you have and how much fuel you have. And you need to make sure that these are pretty much equal. So yeah, one small tank of oxalite oxidizes the petroleum effectively. The range that I have on this with only one tank is 10 tiles. Um, and this is kind of the trade-off that I was talking about with those steam engines. I'd kind of rather use the steam engine for colonization because I can get everything that I need on that rocket. But I don't need to have all this extra production of things, so uh, yeah, that's kind of the difference. But we can at least go a little further with these petroleum engines. So I'm going to add a second fuel tank and a second oxidizer tank, just like that. And you need to remember to add ladders nearby these smaller modules so your duplicates can actually get in there and load it. So I'm going to load that with oxida or rather with oxalite. This ought to double our range. Then this rocket's function, what is wrong with these slide along? Okay. Then this rocket's function is basically going to be for deep space exploration. So I have my whole map revealed only because this is a debug thing. So I just like clicked on every tile and revealed it, but this is not what the map will look like. You'll need to have your rockets fly out there and uh, do some uh, discovery of stuff. And I prefer to do all of that inside the rocket because I'm going to be taking at least one duplicate there anyway. So I'll usually take a couple of duplicates for that. There is a module you can add in order to do this if you really want to, which is this cartographic module. But I don't know. I, I just haven't found it to be that useful because you're already going to have duplicates out there to do it anyway. So I guess you could add that if you really wanted to. But I don't know. I don't, I don't see that much of a reason. And then, of course, the top of it needs to be a nose cone. So yeah, that'll be pretty much it. The inside of the rocket, you can do some uh, 
discovery of those, which I'll talk about a lot more in the other video, but you can do some discovery by just adding some telescopes inside your rocket like that. And they will do um, discovery of nearby tiles once they get out there. I haven't looked this up in a long time, but I was pretty sure that doing it that way was more effective than the cartographer's module, but I don't remember for sure. Somebody knows, let me know. Uh, that would be good information to have. But yeah, so for a, a rocket that you need to start exploring the deeper parts of space, and especially to start revealing some of these outer asteroids, this is probably what I would recommend. Something pretty standard. All right, let's talk about our deep space stuff. Uh, let's see how Stinky's doing, by the way. Oh, he's still not there. All right, so deep space stuff. Uh, this is when hydrogen is going to start being the big thing that we rely on. So I'm going to throw down a hydrogen engine. Hydrogen engines are also going to need fuel tanks in order to uh, get anywhere. So it depends on how many you want to add. I'm just going to add one large liquid fuel tank and one liquid oxidizer tank. This is when we have liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Stinky's probably peeing his pants up in space. He's such a rascal. Uh, so let's say we're going to be trying to colonize one of these further planets. Um, if you tried to do this with the petroleum engine, you really wouldn't have enough modules to take everything that you would need. You can see our height restrictions that we have on this would already kind of be a deal breaker for landing with some of the other modules that you would want, which the trio that we talked about is going to be the Trailblazer, the Rover, and the Orbital Cargo Module. So... This is why the hydrogen engine is really good, is because it can handle all these things with room to spare and get you out to these really far locations for colonization. So, assuming that we were going to uh, colonize one of the really far ones... Oh, Stinky's going to be stress vomiting. That's nice. Uh, we'll just let him stress vomit. That's fine. Let's see how he's doing. Oh, where is he? Oh, duh. It's right here. <laughs> this is going to be one dirty suit by the time he's done. Alright. Oh, he doesn't have any food either. Um, hmm. Well, guess we better spawn some food for him. Berry. Sludge. There you go, buddy. Here, take your suit off. Alright, have fun. All right, so colonization of those deeper ones. Let's fill this up and see what kind of range we get with what this has. So just going to add another debug thing here really quickly, which I guess we could fit right here. One of them needs to be liquid oxygen, so they'll hook it up to this one. There we go. And the other one needs to be liquid hydrogen, so I'll just kind of like draw it around. Oh, I'm going to want to make this out of some different uh, materials, by the way, because the... Liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen may uh, gas off, which will break the pipes and will cause a problem. It looks like we're okay here, actually, so this one should be fine. But for the hydrogen, for sure... Oh, I'm filling this up with water. Uh, <laughs> so hard to remember. Ah, oh, gosh. Why can't this just read my mind and know what I want? I actually just kind of wish that it wasn't starting with anything. I hate that it defaults to something. I wish it would just be like, uh, select what you want. So yeah, filling this up with liquid oxygen. Yeah, we should be good. Okay. Liquid hydrogen. And yeah, build it out of insulated pipes. This is why ceramic is so good, by the way, is for situations like this, where you have a something in here that's very sensitive to heat change because it's so cold or so hot. Uh, so ideally, you would want to use ceramic for these and kind of pump it in there. Uh, we need to add our module for settling, or rather for taking our duplicates, so there we go. Need to add our power for this, which is going to be a battery. A few solar panels ought to do it. Let's check our height. So yeah, height of the two is pretty much the same, but you can get further along with the uh, hydrogen engine with just one fuel tank. So you can see our range is already 16 tiles, which is really far. Uh, if you do need to go further for some other type of rockets, we'll talk about those here in just a second. But this is pretty much it for colonizing one of those further uh, asteroids. So just need the nose cone. There. So yeah, same deal as usual. Just kind of load the materials you would need in here. Uh, this is going to be some kind of refined metal. This is going to be your rover's module so the bot can get down and uh, handle colonization. And the trailblazer module. So 
there you go. This is a pretty standard setup for colonization on a deeper uh, asteroid. Let's talk about another thing. Uh, sometimes we might want to have some of these asteroids pre-mined. Um, one of which in particular that's a huge problem with this is this one. Um, let me see if there's a way that I can actually reveal this. Uh, hold on a second. If I do this, can I oversee the planetoid? No. I'm trying to turn on my cheats to see if I can oversee it, but I'll talk about it in my walkthrough. But basically, some of the asteroids have really, like, not hospitable surfaces. That's going to take a while to establish before it's safe to send your duplicates there. So, another type of rocket that I would use is going to be what I like to call, like, a site prep rocket. Um, and that's basically sending some uh, rovers down to the surface to just do a bunch of a bunch of work before your duplicates get there. So uh, this one's going to be pretty straightforward. Just as many rover modules as I can add. It looks like this is about it. Let me check our height really quick. Yeah, so I don't really want to add more than this because I'd have to start sacrificing my solar panels or my battery or something. But if I wanted to like pre uh, prep a site before I went there, um, this is something I could definitely do and is especially going to be useful for here and especially useful for landing on the magma planet. If you are going to the magma planet though, you're going to want to make sure to build this out of a material that's not going to melt when your rover gets there. So your rover doesn't like touch the surface and instantly melt, uh, which is definitely a thing. So you might want to make this out of something else. I think we can make it out of steel. Let me double check. Yeah, so you can make it out of steel, which would be best for landing the rovers on that particular asteroid. So yeah, uh, site prep rocket, quote unquote, is what I'd like to call it. Uh, so yeah, there's that. The last rocket type that I've really used or really had a purpose for is going to be what I like to call long range shipping rocket. And this is going to be a rocket that you need to send supplies out to one of these really distant planets. Um, you could also just use the interplanetary launcher, which is a good option. But if you needed a whole bunch of supplies all at once, that might that's not always the quickest way to do it. Um, so there's another option here that we could use. Oh, let me get rid of these so that we stop gassing off. So what I would like to do here is just add a whole bunch of orbital cargo modules to one of these hydrogen rockets. And you can add a lot. So I'm going to add four of them, which is a good way to transport about, you know, 24 tons of material and just kind of spray it down on the planet. Um, your orbital, or rather your uh, interplanetary launcher is going to do that for you if you're running that already, but sometimes you get yourself into a situation where you can't wait that long or it's not meeting the demand. And if that's the case, this is definitely a rocket that you can launch just to spray supplies down. So yeah, that's pretty much every rocket type that I would use. I'm not talking about the interiors yet, only because this video is already getting kind of long and I'd like to save that for a separate one. So I'll go back through all of these rocket types and in the same order in the next video, where I'm going to talk about the interiors and kind of give a little bit more information about how your duplicates are going to navigate those missions. So yeah, that's going to be the plan. Let's check on Stinky. Here's our uh, mining rocket that's going to work here going to be mining out the uh, resources as much as possible. And let's, uh, let me do this. Let me destroy these rockets really quickly. I'll get Stinky back. We'll start to unload it so we can actually see how the uh, cargo bay works. Also, by the way, you could use the liquid or gas cargo bays, but I just haven't found a reason. Like, why would I send a mission to go get polluted oxygen? I can make that so easily. Um, so I don't know. There's probably some other reasons to do this that I haven't really found yet or that I don't have a need for. I guess molten iron's not horrible, but I don't know. I don't really see that much of a reason. All right, let me get Stinky back and we'll unload this other uh, rocket that's out there. All right, look who's back. Stinky has re-arrived. So your unloader is just going to be taking stuff that was sitting in your cargo bay and it should be unloading it unless something got melted. Yeah, looks like our engine did melt it. So you want to make sure to build this out of something that won't melt, which I clearly didn't do. Uh, Wolframite is typically one of the better things to build this out of. Uh, so yeah, there you go. It's just going to start unloading stuff from our cargo bay. And you can see the stuff that it brings back. And it'll be roughly at the same percentages of what was listed on the uh, star map. But yeah, so that's the idea. 
And that kind of completes all the rocket exteriors that we'll talk about. I believe the next one will be coming out tomorrow about rocket interiors. So check that part out. We'll kind of continue from where we started here. And we'll be talking about a few different layouts that are going to be good for the different type of rockets that you want to take. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one really soon.